Comments on the Tampa Bay Times editorial dated July 21st, 2013, Facts, Lies, and the Lens. First question, what are the lies stated in the title and who is telling them? A lie is a deliberate misstatement of a fact with intent to mislead. The only place the Times refers to lies is in the title of the editorial. One expects a newspaper to cite sources to back up their facts, yet the Times did not do so. These comments will cite sources supporting the facts mentioned. Let's start with the fact from the Times that there is an air-conditioned restaurant on the lens. Well, quite frankly, that's just plain wrong. There is no air-conditioned restaurant on the lens. You can see in this July 3rd updated rendering of the Promontory Grill by the architect, it clearly shows that the area will not be enclosed and air-conditioned. Also, in a meeting on July 10th by the City of St. Petersburg, hosted by Council Member Leslie Coran, Chris Balestra, the Managing Director, Development Coordination for the City of St. Pete, said, quote, The cafe is open air. The Columbia Restaurant on land is air-conditioned. The Tampa Bay Times even had a reporter at this event. So, very simply, there is no air-conditioned restaurant on the lens. The Tampa Bay Times had a reporter in an event where the city announced it. Perhaps the Times should give this their own Pants on Fire rating. The Times also said that on the lens will be community gathering spaces. Well, is there really community gathering space on the lens? Let's take a look. Here's the 22,900 square foot promontory and the architect schematic. Here you'd have the restrooms the ice cream stand, the promontory turnaround, where vehicles uh, obviously turn around. Of course, you can't block that area. The fishing area, learning steps, these are not covered. Stairs, the elevator, promontory grill, and finally the overwater drive. All of the areas that you see highlighted are spoken for. In other words, you could not use them to have a community gathering or community event. Only the minimal area you see that is not highlighted is what is available for these gatherings. Not a very large space at all. Here's another fact that the Times has. On the lens will be an amphitheater that can accommodate 285 people. Well, as you can see, the, the architect does say that the amphitheater, also called the Learning Steps, can accommodate 285 people. But take a look at the space yourself. Do you think you could comfortably seat 285 people here? Another fact that the Times has is that uh, on land will be areas for staging food truck rallies or other community events. The hub next to Spa Beach is a community gathering spot with a public plaza. Well, let's take a look at that hub. And you see the schematic here for the newspaper. You've got the turnaround, which of course is for vehicles, cars to arrive, drop off passengers and turn around um, and emergency vehicles to be able to turn around there too and the remainder of the hub is all the space that's actually available for people to gather on. Obviously you couldn't block the vehicular turnaround because vehicles would then have no place to go. So I'm not quite sure where this large community gathering really is. And let's take another look here at the picture from the newspaper and the ramp for bicycles to the overwater bridge. Notice those very sharp turns? Well, here's what the city had to say about that bike path. The intent is obviously that when you get to the end of the overwater bridge, you're probably going to have to dismount your bike and walk your bike down that ramp. It's not intended to be a ramp that you're going to easily ride a bike down. And that was said by Raul Quintana, city architect at a city council workshop. How about the marina? The Times said there will be a marina that can accommodate 24 motorized recreational boats. Well, that's also what the architect says. Actually, the architect says this circular marina will hold, quote, up to 24 motorcraft along with human-powered watercraft. Well, let's see how safe and reasonable that seems to you using the architect's updated rendering from July 3rd. There's one boat, two, three, four, five, six. Now, according to the architect, you can fit 18 more boats in that marina safely and comfortably. What do you think?
Times gets into their myth number two, that the lens will offer no shade. No one has ever said there would be no shade on the lens. Uh, from a quick glance at the design, it is obvious there will be some shade. Although perhaps very limited in the late afternoon as the sun sets, which is when people would be at the grill, the real question is, is the lens safe in our sun, heat, and sudden storms? Remember, there's no air-conditioned building for relief from the sun and heat. There's no sheltered area from storms, and we get a lot of sudden powerful storms in our area. The only shelter is under the canopy where rain and wind will blow. Look at the promontory edge. There's no shelter here. No shelter here. And you have a possible wind tunnel effect. As the winds and rains blow in, they can be funneled down by the canopy, achieving maximum force and velocity down to the point where people will be. Another myth number two, there's no air conditioning. Again, they have their fact there are two air-conditioned restaurants, one on land, one on the water. Well, we already discussed that, but since they mentioned it twice, we will too. Again, mentioning that perhaps the Times should give this their own pants on fire rating. And another myth too they had was no restrooms and no access except for walkers. Who's ever said this? Perhaps the Times might cite a source or some other evidence rather than create its own myths. So where the Times editorial failed, the Times failed to check the facts, the Times made up its own myths, and the Times failed to do responsible reporting. Get the facts. Watch the 10-minute video on the StopTheLens.com website in the Our Views section titled Understanding the Lens, Fact, Fiction, and Confusion. If the title seems a bit familiar, well, it existed long before the Times editorial. You'll also see how St. Pete is ready to move forward in a positive manner with a new peer. And once you know the facts, you will want to vote yes to Stop the Lens August 27th.